This is the Model 3 drive unit that I'll be powering the Land Rover with. It's not an engine because it doesn't use fuel or steam to produce power. Actually what we're looking at isn't just a motor either. Uh, we have an electric motor going through a single reduction gear into a differential with the inverter that controls the motor packaged into one end. So this is why it's referred to as a drive unit. It's a pretty impressive piece of kit. That small little motor puts out about 250 kilowatts and the whole compact drive unit weighs in at around 95 kilos and can rev to around 16,500 RPM. And like all electric motors, it produces 100% of its torque, which is about 450 newton meters, from all the way from zero RPM up to about 6,000 RPM before it starts slowly decreasing. Now, this is going to be mounted in the center of the Land Rover, uh, rotated through 90 degrees, and the differential outputs will drive the front and rear Land Rover prop shafts instead of driving the Tesla's left and right half shafts. So this all sounds fairly straightforward. I just need to weld up a frame to support it between the chassis rails and graft the Land Rover prop shafts to the Tesla outputs. It will even rotate in the same direction to provide forward motion. There are some issues that I'll have to address though. Firstly, there's the gear ratio. The reduction gear in the Tesla is just over nine to one which gives the Tesla a top speed of around 260 kilometers an hour. Now this reduction ratio won't work in the Land Rover because the way I'm mounting it, uh, the outputs will go to the Land Rover's front and rear differentials, which changes the ratio by about three and a half to one. So this would result in my top speed being only about 80 kilometers an hour. Also, the way you enable four wheel drive in the Land Rover is to lock the center differential which will then force both the front and rear differential to get equal amounts of drive. Now the Tesla just has a standard open differential, so it would technically never be in four wheel drive. I also need to find a way to mount the Land Rover prop shafts onto the Tesla outputs. Luckily a company called Felton has solved all these issues, offering a different reduction gear set, a Quaif limited slip diff, and output shafts that will bolt straight onto the original Land Rover prop shafts. So let's go ahead and install everything. So first step is to drain the oil. There's no um, oil drain plug on these, so the oil pump is at the lowest point. So to drain the oil, you just remove the oil pump. Have to be very careful because it's plastic. The last thing you want to do is break it. There it is. Beautiful. There's the oil pump. Okay, and next thing I'm going to do is take this water fitting off. Not that you have to, but it's something that would be easy to break. And make sure you have a drain underneath to catch the glycol. Okay, it's going to take this end mounting bracket off. Just have a little clip here, just put a little screwdriver under and theoretically it'll come out. I prefer to take them all the way out because they tend to slip back on and just to make sure it is fully disconnected. Pull it off. So you can see here, there's a little flat point here next to the output. And then this will pop out. And then the other side, yep, oh, you can still by hand. And you can just pull it out. We've got to remove this plug here. and avoid doing that. All this does is seal with these O-rings the connectors for the inverter to the motor. Remove the filter, should just be very firm hand tightness. 
Just unturn it anti-clockwise. And hold it up so it doesn't leak all everywhere. Timber. My soft mallet just to free it up, break the seal. There's a couple of spots you can leave out, which is outside the sealed gasket area. Cut it. Cut it. Sticky bearing on the diff. And you're in. Just be aware that the output shaft and reduction gear bearings will have a shim. This side stayed onto this side. This side, side stayed in the case here. So just make sure they, they need to go back in the same positions. So I'm actually going to put this one in the case for the moment. So next we just need to release the motor output shaft uh, and then we need to start lifting out the diff and the reduction gear. Yes, this one's released. Get the diff to release. There we go, it's released. Just pull up on them individually. Oop, sorry. Greasy. Yep, it's coming. Yep, and once this is out a little bit, this will come out. I'll get that out of the way so I don't damage it. Just lots of wiggling and cajoling. Got it. And after a lot of wiggling, you'll be able to finally release them. Now just be aware, this other side of the differential, there's another shim which goes this side, the motor side, so you want to make sure that that st stays in there. You don't want to get that mixed up with the other ones, probably best just to leave it in there. The crown wheel side has a much thinner bearing than the non-crown wheel side. Now I'm going to remove these crown wheel bolts before I pull this because I can't get my puller on with these bolts. Now my puller will fit. Just use a soft mallet to tapity tap it off. And there it is. There's the old open diff that we no longer need. Then we get our quaif diff and assemble it the reverse. Line up the holes and then I'm just going to put some of these on to make sure that the holes are lined up properly. And then I'm going to Tap it on with a soft mallet. Apparently you don't want to pull it down with the bolts. You want to first get it sitting down where it should be, but you want to line up the, all the bolt holes obviously. So Quaif provides replacement screws for this too. But I'm going to use some Loctite on these, 12.9 grade, the old Tesla ones are 10.9, so these are stronger. Very small amount of Loctite on each one. And then just nip them up loosely. Now 
Now I need to torque these up to 100 newton meters. Much easier to do this in a vise. The quaif has some nice flat bits on either side so you can clamp it in the vise no problem. And try and do opposite sides, try and tighten it down evenly. Now we need to just press each bearing back on to the new quaif diff. Make sure they're on all the way. And, yep. Okay, pretty obvious when they've seated. It just becomes a lot harder. Okay, so now to the reduction gears. These are the original, it's a motor drives this shaft, uh, which goes onto here, and then it drives this gear onto the crown wheel of the diff. So we're changing these two gears to reduce it, well, to reduce it less, to non-reduce it more. Uh, so we'll be replacing this whole shaft with gear, so this we need to just change the bearings across and this oil um, thrower that gets oil from the motor side and I think just puts oil through this side of the bearing. And then this one, we just got to change this gear, which means we're going to have to pull this bearing, pull the gear off, put this gear on, put the uh, bearing back on. So first step we need to remove this plastic oil director or whatever it is. So we're going to have to get a long deep socket that fits in there and over the little plastic thing that pokes up. I've got a 14 mil deep socket with a extension. So I'm just going to rest it on this socket so that the plastic bit can go down into the socket. Go. And next step, just got to remove the bearings. Helps if you use a smaller one of these, probably too. Okay, and so just noting these bearings, I have a plastic holder here. Both of them face the same way, so down towards the motor side. Getting that go on quite easily. So this side, I'm going to have to use this big three quarter inch drive socket so it goes over the shaft because this one does sit down past the shaft. Right, now the final thing to do on this one is to insert the oil director or I don't know what this is called but it goes in this side the gear side the little o-ring here so make sure that's got a little bit of oil on just so it goes down the hole nicely and then you'll feel that it's a nice fit And you can see the bits of, they have little plastic ridges on the edges to hold it in. I'll just clean, I'll just clean that up and that one is done. Okay, now we've just got to pull this gear 
splined in there. Jesus. Just going to give it some heat because it's pretty tight. So when you heat something up, it will expand. So I'm heating up the gear to try to get it to expand. Have a tap with the hammer. Getting this gear off needed a lot more force than I could give it even with a 20 ton press. So I ended up getting some help uh, from a friend who has a 40 ton press which managed to do it. Okay, that's on. Beautiful. I'll put the bearing on while we're here. Actually, I'm gonna wait, because that's, that's quite warm now, just from conducting the heat through. That's quite warm, so I'm just gonna let that sit for a fair while, just to let all that cool down slowly. Okay, let's press the bearing back on. Done. Okay, so before I put the two halves back together with the new gears in, um, the original output shaft seals for the Tesla Model 3, the bearing surface on these outputs uh, is 40 millimeters, but I'm replacing them with these Land Rover prop shaft compatible ones, which have a 44 millimeter seal face. I think I've done that because, so the Model S has a 44 millimeter seal. These will also fit a Model S as far as I'm aware. Um, so you need to replace these with the larger seal. And just tap them out, they'll come out pretty easy. Now we've got the diff and the reduction gear and the oil pipe which brings the oil from the filter through to the heat exchanger here and then comes back in here. Um, but it also, this tray here shields the these gears from running in oil which is, creates um, less efficiency so if you don't have them stirring through the oil, uh, it's much more efficient. Pretty sure that's why they have this. Now you just got to put that on there, and it's a little tricky. Got to basically lift these together, and put them in, making sure that, just remember I've got the diff spacer shim, in this half, the motor side of the casing and lining up where the bearings go and start wiggling around okay, diff sort of going in production gears slotting in And as you're doing it, just when you get down a bit, you can start to slot the plastic O-ring. Make sure that they're going into the right positions. There we go. Beautifully, they're just 
popped in. Then Nita, this is pretty obvious, the plastic shield has two o-ring inlet and outlets and a little clip up here. Uh, now we can put the output gear in. This is easier because this gear is now smaller. It allows you to just slot this straight in unlike when this was bigger and you couldn't get that bottom bearing past it. Um, so one thing to watch out for, uh, the motor there, this is the end bearing support of the motor and because it's permanent magnets, um, the magnets are going to want to pull it to one side or the other so you're going to have to manoeuvre it around. Um, yeah, so that just popped in. Be careful if you're tapping it in. You really want to avoid this plastic fitting here. And then we just need to put the other side on. Okay, so we've got the spaces for the um, output gear, comes from the motor, and the reduction gear that are still in here. I'm going to put a bit of grease on these just to hold them in place so they don't fall out. A little smear of grease over it. Okay, now we need to place this case. Pair this case up to the other one. Obviously I've got the um, an aluminium with a rubber seal on the inside. Make sure you put that in first. Otherwise it's going to be a bit leaky. And carefully offer this up. There we go. Lovely. And gently tapity tap. Uh, remembering there's eight going in on the inverter, they're all the same. Uh, there's eight on the inverter side and ten on the motor side. Just going to go around and loosely bring them up. Just to bring the uh, case together fairly equally. Okay, and once they're all nipped up loosely, we need to go and Talk them up to 25 Newton meters. Okay, so now it's time to install our new output shaft seals. This has got a raised lip. You need to either put a socket over to contact the shoulder, or you can use the original Model 3 output shafts. And they should be flush when you're finished. Done. Okay, with the new output shafts, you'll also get a pack of these retainer clips, spring clips. These go in the end here in the little slot. You can just I need a little screwdriver. Get one end in first. And the other one and it'll just slip easily on. And they'll slip straight on. So they're ready to put in. Oil the seals up first. A bit of lubrication. I'm also going to put a little bit in the shaft just to be safe. 
right, and then just tap them in with your rubber mallet. There we go. So I've upended the drive unit again, lubricated the oil filter with oil, and it's actually full of oil, so it won't have to be primed. Then just twist it on, turn it as hard as you can. Click. So now the oil pump has three O-rings. Put a bit of clean oil on each one of them. Put it in and sort of twist and push as you do it. Just pop in. There we go. Torqued to five Newton meters, which is very small. Plus 20 degrees. So Something like that. Now we need to top it up with oil. Here's a hex eight millimeter to take out the fill plug. The instructions for this on Tesla are fairly in depth. Uh, I took out a bit over two liters, maybe two and a quarter liters. So one way is just to put that back in, although I've still got oil in there, remember? It's one liter. I don't think you don't top it up and like normal, like a normal transmission, you would top it up until it starts overflowing. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's not the case with Tesla. You put a certain amount in and then you actually have a, there's a dipstick tool that you buy um, that verifies the level, I guess. And you've got to operate the oil pump to get things lead maybe before you check it. The fluid is ATF9. The official fluid from Tesla is comes in big drums apparently and that's if you can get it. Um, you can get ATF9 in a royal royal purple royal purple max ATF and then talk that up. Now we need to install the three phase bolts. Don't drop them inside the housing, otherwise you're gonna to have to take them apart to get them. A long socket is useful for this. And then we need to torque them to 11.5 Newton meters. Done. Set the phase cover back in. Okay. And we torque these to 14 Newton meters. I just need to plug back in the cooling hose, make sure the clip's on and it, it'll line up only one way and just, just clips on nicely. Thirty-five Newton meters. Now we can reinstall the fluid coupling. Six Newton meters. So we're done. Modified and ready to install into the Land Rover. Got a new gear ratio. Got a limiter slip diff. New output seals. New output flanges. 